A teenager is reported missing in Sussex. They haven't been seen for 15 hours. We've got a 15-year-old high-risk missing person was last seen at 5.45 last evening. Sussex police are worried the person could harm themselves and have launched an extensive search. We have no direction of travel. We are simply going to start at the place last seen. They've deployed a helicopter and volunteers on foot, but this time police have another little-known team out looking. They're enlisting help of a four-legged kind with their noses and instincts helping the police, it's Search Dog Sussex. These aren't members of the emergency services, they're just everyday dog owners who want to help out. They're on call 24 hours a day and on average they get called out twice a month. Their pet dogs can work very ably at night. Steep sides and big drops present no problems to them. The dogs are very, very good at what they do and they can cover the areas quickly with very high levels of assurance. June Felstead from Eastbourne and her dog Molly are about to get to work. Come on in. But once I put her coat on and I give her the command, go find, she'll, she'll run off and use her nose and, and find any human scent in the area. These dogs don't follow the tracks of a missing person with their noses down like tracker dogs would. They have their noses up and follow the scent in the air. Come on in, ready, ready. My job is to watch her closely and put her in the best position to be able to find because the wind, the weather and the terrain all affect the scent on where the scent's going to go. Come on, Mark. Last year, Sussex Search Dogs received the Queen's Award, the highest honour given to any voluntary group in the UK. Nurse lecturer Sharon Plowright has been a member of the team for 10 years. So Sharon, you call yourself Lowland Rescue as opposed to Highland Rescue. What's the difference? A number of people in the Highlands are fallen climbers or things like that. Um, and they're generally people that want to be found. Um, and generally in the Lowlands here, we're looking for people that have gone off to self-harm or have got Alzheimer's and will often try and evade us. They don't realise they're lost mm. because they're too confused. Doesn't look me. Look. <laughs> Anyone can apply to join, and the team runs a beginners and intermediate search dog course every Easter. One more time. What we do um, is teach them the basics. So they get to know whether their dog um, has got a talent for the sort of work, and we get to know about the dog and person. And from there, um, I'm afraid we only take on one or two dogs a year generally. Yay, good job. Nice. Now the best dogs for the job are working breeds like Spaniels or Border Collies. Today I'm joining the Search Dogs course with my Labradoodle, Boris. Let's see how he gets on. How are you going to get on? All Search Dogs have to train for around 18 months and then go through a national assessment before they can start working. They have to be tested every two years to make sure they're up to standard. I do hope Boris makes the grade. So what we'll do, we'll put the search coat onto Boris and yep. that'll indicate to him that we are going to do some search and rescue training. Okay. The first part of the training that we're going to do is going to be very easy. Oh, good boy. Um, doesn't look like we're searching for somebody, but we're going to teach Boris what the game is of search. Okay. okay. So a bit further this time. So we're going to remember what the cue is to send him. Away find, away find. Nice job. Yay, good job, Boris. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Sadly, they don't always find people in time, so as the hours tick by, the urgency of this search for the missing teenager intensifies. It's going to be getting dark within another couple of hours. Um, it will continue, as I said, until probably midnight, which will be a good, in total, sort of 12, 14 hours of search activity um, involving certainly in the region of 75 to 80 people on the ground. Health and safety manager Steve is the chairman of the team and he and his dog Kane are also out looking. Basically we'll search until either the police stop us because they've got no more places to search reasonably. Uh, the darkness doesn't make any difference to us. Most of our call outs are in pitch black in the woods. On his neck is a, a light collar um, so I can see him when there's low light levels in the woods where he is and if he's uh, stationary, it's a good indicator he's with somebody. Good lad. 
Kane here, one of the members of the team, has been a bit of a hero recently, haven't you, Kane? And that's about one of the last of him before all of a sudden he went into hospital. Kane came to the rescue when Nova Brooks' husband, David, who has dementia, disappeared one night from his care home. It wasn't particularly cold, but it was raining all night. He didn't have a coat on, he just had his ordinary daytime clothes and his slippers and a cardigan, and I believe that he'd started to get undressed, which is a bit scary. The police uh, drone had been up and looked for him and been unable to locate him, and the foot teams had uh, been unable to locate him due to the steepness of the terrain. I thought we'd find him in a ditch dead. I, I didn't think for a minute we'd find him alive. The dog was deployed. Um, luckily, uh, he caught the gentleman's scent and he was in a very difficult place, uh, halfway down a very steep embankment, and he had also slidden under some um, brambles, so he was actually out of sight. And being in a bramble, of course, when they did manage to get him out, um, he was covered in, in thorns and you know, bruises, as you can well imagine. So it was a very difficult find, and Kane found him, got his scent, told us he was there. So how proud were you of him? <laughs> oh, awesome, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's what we live for, really. And he just felt he'd been in a big dream. But um, yes, it, it was only due to the dog, you know, very grateful that they found him alive. And it's good news for the missing teenager's family as well. Thankfully, I can report it was a successful outcome. The uh, vulnerable young person was found in a woodland area using other search assets that we had. Um, the dog certainly helped move that operation forward and, and again without them it, who knows what could have happened That's about it, Joe, that so has boris got what it takes to join the team well we're not completely sure yet but in the meantime the sussex search dogs are on standby ready for the next missing person in need of help <laughs>